We'll call this meeting to order. <laughs> Thank you for that, sir. Sure. <laughs> um, doesn't look like we have Brian McBride with us this morning. So we'll just stand for a moment of silence and then do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please. Commissioner Payne. Present. Commissioner McFall. Present. Commissioner Bell. Present. County Attorney Jackson. Sorry, that she present. wasn't here. County Manager Bryant. Present. Planning and Zoning Director Coke. Present. Approval of the uh, agendas next. Any changes? I am unaware of any changes to today's agenda, Mr. Chair. I move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. And uh, we are not scheduling any public hearings in the near future for on this agenda. So uh, anything else you want to talk about there? No, Mr. Chair. I okay. move to approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Move on to administrative and informational <coughs> staff and elected officials. We'll move on to the county manager's report. Good morning, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> so we've had a very busy last couple of weeks. Um, so on Wednesday, April 11th, I attended a strategic planning session for the Southern Colorado Economic Development District. So it's the SCED um, program that the county is a part of. And at this point in the organization, we're at the point where we need to find and demonstrate it, the value that the organization provides to other counties because there's a lot of counties that are looking at um, maybe going a different direction um, or the group should essentially dissolve and, and try to come up with something else. And so it was a very good meeting. Um, there were some counties there that haven't been a, dist or a member of SCED for quite some time that gave a lot of input as to what they want to see in an organization. And so we have a follow-up meeting in June um, to discuss the items and go over the report from that session um, and see if it makes sense to continue moving forward or go in a different direction. Um, we are in the process. We have a vacancy for the <coughs> director position there, so we are in the process of looking at what those options may be um, and seeing what, as far as an organization, if we do continue to move forward, we'll need to hire a new executive director for that group. On Thursday, April 12th, I attended an area manager's luncheon, so it's always good to see what the other um, entities in our, in our local area are, are up to right now. And um, let's see, the auditors were here the week of April 16th, so that took a ton of our time. So I appreciate all the help Charlene gave me because I don't think I would have survived that week if it wasn't for her. And on Tuesday, um, April 17th, we had the county health fair. So there were about 127 employees that participated in that this year. And it was a really good turnout. Um, St. Thomas More Hospital did a fantastic job in putting it all together. They, everything ran smoothly. So it's definitely a good event. And then um, let's see, the last thing. So on Thursday, April 19th, um, our HR director, Tammy Childs, and I actually attended some interviews at Canyon City High School for their internship program that they're doing. So we're hoping to have somebody come in, um, at least in public health department and hopefully in a few other departments next year to actually get to know what government does and what a few of our departments do. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, sorry, I have one more thing. Um, I attended the, the court appointed special advocate luncheon. So thank you, Stacy, for inviting me to that. Um, that was last Thursday. And if you don't know what the, that group does, I would encourage you to look into it. Um, they are needing some volunteers for the CASA volunteers. So if you're not aware of what that group does, I would say check it out and see if it's something you would be interested in. So that's all I have for the manager's report. So I'll go into the sales tax. Okay. 
Okay, so for the month of February, the retail sales tax collections came in at $324,747, which is up $3,900 from February of last year. Year to date, we're up $24,000. The auto use tax um, in the month of March came in at $100,650, which is up $5,688 from March of last year. In year to date, we're up $46,000. The construction use tax came in at $13,755, which is up $646 from March of last year. Um, year to date, we're slightly down, $5,800. And then the lodging tax, um, we had $1, so it was actually a penalty of one entity that had to pay, um, which is, like I've said in the past, lodging is collected on a quarterly basis, so it's not uncommon for us to not have anything in some of these periods. Um, so we'll look at this next month's um, reporting, and that'll give us a better idea. The sheriff retail sales tax collections were $216,498, which is up $2,600 from February of last year. Year to date, we're up 16295 And the auto use tax collections for the sheriff is at $67,100, which is up 3792 And year to date, we're up 30963 And last, the construction use tax collection came in at 9170 for the month of March, which is up $431. And year to date, we're down slightly, just under 4000 Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Other staff elected officials <coughs> report. Something I would just like to okay. mention briefly, Mr. Chair. Last Friday night, many of us had the opportunity to attend the Pueblo Community College Fremont Campus Hall of Fame event. And we um, were so pleased to be able to see four individuals inducted into the Hall of Fame. One were a couple, uh, John and Mary Kay Evans, then Tiny Striegel. Um, her real name's Dorothy. Everyone knows her as Tiny. If you've ever seen her, you'll understand why. And uh, retired County Commissioner Ed Norton. So it was just a really, really great event. We had the opportunity to hear our own Sonny Bryant actually be the one to introduce Ed. Things got a little bit emotional for a moment, but it was a really, really great evening. So thanks um, and for the opportunity to be there, and congratulations to all those folks. And I also wanted to mention, Mr. Chair, um, April is almost over, and that means it's time for May. And May means Blossom Festival time. So we actually, it's not this coming weekend, but it's the following weekend. So Blossom Festival will be happen, will happen before we all get back together in this room for another meeting. I just would like to encourage everyone to turn out for that event. There are so many really fun things to do. Um, don't miss the parade. It's going to be a really good time. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chair, i got a couple of things I want to mention. One, um, I was able to attend with our airport manager, Dick Baker, an uh, aeronautics, state aeronautics meeting the other day in Colorado Springs. That was right before the fire in the Springs at the airport. Um, didn't have anything to do with that, by the way. Uh, but it was kind of interesting that when the federal government passed the omnibus bill, there was money in there um, that was earmarked for rural airports. So we're looking at that and trying to see um, how we can capitalize on some of that grant money from from the federal government to help with out here at the airport, whether it be improvements, whatever it may be. So we're looking at that, it's kind of interesting. Um, I just wanna remind everybody that even though we've gotten a little bit of moisture the last few days, it's not enough. It's still very, very, very dry out there. Everyone needs to be very diligent in what they're doing, mitigate around their homes for fire protection. Um, just be safe, it's, it's scary out there. Um, one other thing is, I'm going to kind of jump ahead of May just a little bit because it's not too early yet. July 27th through August 5th is the Fremont County Fair. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to start your pumpkin growth and get them 200 pound pumpkins so you can enter them in the fair. Um, these little schedules, I have a few here, but there's also some over here at the County Extension Agent Office, which is just across the foyer here. So keep that in mind. Again, that's July 27th through August 5th is the county fair. So it's going to be here before we know it. That's all we got. Okay. Sure. Anybody else have anything? Okay, we'll move on to uh, citizens who wish to address the commissioners on matters not scheduled on the agenda. Anybody have anything? John. Good morning, sir. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The, I thought I would share with you, we had a, a meeting. you introduce yourself, please? I'm John Hamrick. I'm a, a citizen here in Canyon City. I'm also on Canyon City Council. Thank you. Uh, and I'm retired. Uh, oh, you just had to push that in. Uh, <laughs> but that's a ha-ha-ha thing. I mean, <laughs> that, you know, it's we the, know. my schedule is a we lot know. busier. Oh, dear. Uh, but I just wanted to report to you, uh, Commissioner Bell was there at the meeting about the P-TECH interns at the high school. Uh, it was a really great meeting. It's an opportunity for our community where high school students in the science, technology, engineering, agric agriculture, and math fields can get uh, basically, if they're in, uh, enrolled in high school in one of the STEM um, curricula, they can uh, uh, be an intern uh, and when they're in that program at the end of their high school when they graduate they get two free years of community college uh, either here in Canyon City or over in uh, Colorado Springs at the PCC campus over there uh, and the meeting was held to discuss the particulars of the program who can qualify for it uh, and uh, some of those, uh, you know, the how it will work for potential employers. The city is a potential employer. The county is a potential employer. Uh, and so this is a great opportunity for our students uh, to be able to graduate high school and stick around for another two years uh, with free college. The details of that, of exactly how that's going to work between, uh, because we have this program because of uh, the the tech start group that are that are here there are actually 173 school districts here in Colorado <clears throat> there have been four P tech grants we are the only rural community to receive this P tech grant it, this is this is and it's due to our um, tech start group uh, they've been really instrumental in doing this uh, and I'd like to give a shout out to them but hang on the details are yet to be announced on how the county uh, can possibly use one of these interims it, it looks like it's going to happen for the next school year so that's and, great Stay and tuned. local businesses also would qualify for an intern if they have the appropriate jobs correct yes it has to be through tech start yes but yes. but yes and those details are being arranged all right so start thinking about where you might be able to right to Use someone. Outstanding. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank, thank you, John. John. Any other citizens have anything for us? Not on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, we have no old business. Move on to new business. Number item number one: a homeless coalition present presentation. And I believe we have Dee Dee Clement and Rochelle Ryder is here and as well. Rochelle Ryder. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. ladies and ladies. <laughs> Thanks for letting us come and uh, talk with you about our homeless coalition and uh, the point in time count. Um, so every year across the United States, uh, oh. a little bit closer to the microphone. How's, how's we that? want everyone out there to hear what you're saying. You gotta get close to it. Oh, there like you, yeah. <laughs> okay. you can take it out of there if you want to hold it too. Okay. Yeah. Um, so thank you again for asking us to come and share with you the results of the point in time count. Um, every year across the United States, um, a point in time account is done on, in all the different communities. Um, volunteers look for individuals who are experiencing homelessness and ask to ask them if they're able to complete a short survey with them. This year, with the help of the Fremont County Coalition, a large group of volunteers helped to administer the survey. And our survey was actually conducted on January 21st through the 25th. So a couple things about the point in time count. Um, the information that is gathered comes directly from the individuals that are surveyed. So individuals have a right not to answer some of the questions. Um, again, uh, the survey uh, this year targeted in the Penrose, Florence, and the Canyon City area. We uh, had about 20 volunteers. We went to parks and the libraries and uh, food pantries, laundromats, places where individuals who are experiencing homelessness generally hang out at. Um, law enforcement plays a, a key role as we do uh, the survey. They're able to go into the homeless camps where we're maybe sending volunteers may be unsafe. And so this year the Sheriff's Department and the Canyon City Police Department helped us out to do a, um, 
uh, with the count. Also, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that this is just a snapshot. So this is not counts for the whole year. Again, this is just the number of people that we counted from January 21st through the 25th. So, so during that short period of time, we actually counted 195 individuals who were experiencing homelessness. And you can see where we found them. 69 people were saying that they were sleeping outside. 61 people said that they were staying in a hotel or an RV park. 26 people said that they were couch surfing, and 31 people said that they were staying in emergency shelters. So here's an interesting fact. So the national rate, according to HUD 2017 unsheltered survey, was 17 individuals per 10,000. Here in Fremont County, um, it was actually 29 people per 10,000. Um, also on the RVs, it's really important to note that these are not the typical RVs that some people might want to stay in. These are people who did not want to be staying in these RVs. Um, they don't have any plumbing. Uh, they don't have um, adequate roofs, so they're leaking. So um, just to clarify, it's you know, not... It's not the $300,000 bus, right. right. Um, so one of the questions that often gets asked is, what were the numbers last year? And so this is actually the first year that we uh, had a, 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 a consolidated effort on the numbers. And so last year, um, there were a total of only 86 individuals that were counted as being homelessness in 2017. So. Um, so where are people sleeping? Again, as Rochelle mentioned, the RV parks are, they're just, well, oftentimes they don't have running water, they don't have electricity. Several times, or many of them have several families that are sleeping inside a, a, a trailer. Outside is underneath a tree or in a tent. Um, emergency shelters, we have two emergency shelters in Fremont County. One is Lowe's and Fish's Emergency Shelter, which houses 17 individuals, and then the Domestic Violence Shelter, which can house 11 individuals. Um, transitional housing, we have one transitional housing program in Fremont County, New Creations Inn, which can house nine individuals. Hotels, um, oftentimes probation officers, parole officers, uh, just generous community members, churches, will put someone up in a hotel for a few nights, um, but once that hotel stay is over, um, oftentimes they're back in their car or sleeping outside. <clears throat> Abandoned buildings is just that. They could be shed, anything that's uninhabitable. And other, um, don't, can't tell you what other is, it's just when we ask the question, they just said other, so. So who are they? This is the age of the different folks. Um, 47 of them uh, indicated that they were survivor, survivors of domestic violence, and 18 of them um, indicated that they were veterans. Another question that kind of gets asked a lot is, uh, how many of them are chronic homeless and how many of them are situational homeless? So chronic homeless, what is chronic homeless? So chronic homeless is someone who's been homeless for one year or longer or who has had three episodes of being, excuse me, four episodes of being homeless in a three year period. So out of the 195 individuals that were um, surveyed, 54 of them said that they were chronic homeless. So again, that means that they've been homeless for a year or longer or that they had been uh, uh, homeless four times in a three-year period. Another question that's asked on the survey is whether or not they have a disabling condition, and you can see how they answered. Um, 64, again, out of those that we invent are, um, in um, interviewed, said that they had no disabling condition. You will see that several people who do have a disabling condition have multiple disabling conditions. And that runs with a national standard, just so you know. It's usually about one in three people um, have a drug issue or one in three people have a um, mental health issue. So those are pretty consistent with what we see on a nationwide basis. So how does this survey help Fremont County? Well, for one, we actually have some hard numbers, right? Because I think for so long, we were kind of doing wild guesses. And now we, can actually, now we actually have hard data that says, during this short period of time, we identified 195 individuals who were experiencing homelessness. The other thing is, is that we are really hoping that this point in time count can help raise awareness in our community, that we can come to forums like this and, and talk about um, the results of the survey, um, and also just to help uh, educate our community about how, seriousness, how serious homelessness is in Fremont County. 
Um, it also helped identify uh, so just some of the health issues that some of the folks um, had. And then the last thing was is that we really want city and county government to consider about how to use resources. And, and maybe they can use this data to help uh, make some wise decisions on how to allocate resources. So what is the Fremont County Ho Coalition doing? Um, so uh, we actually are a relatively new coalition. We started in September of 2016. We have 100 individuals who are all volunteer, who are all part of this coalition. And you can see that they're from all different types of folks. So we have government, we have faith-based, we have service providers, medical providers, law enforcement, business owners, concerned citizens, and we even have those who have been or are currently homelessness. So it is a wide group of people um, who attend these monthly meetings. We, we meet on the third Thursday of the month at the United Presbyterian Church from 9 to 1030. You guys are all welcome to be part of that. We have um, four working subcommittees, education, housing, health, and, and the day center. We encourage all of our members to kind of participate in one of the subcommittees to get involved. So some of the things that we've accomplished uh, this last year or so is we created a resource, di resource guide, and I brought an example here. This is a really easy, updatable resource guide um, that we actually have someone that has laminated them, and we can give them to, we've given them to law enforcement, and they can actually hand them out to folks um, who are experiencing homelessness. Um, we also are in the process, or there is a, a daycare center, or excuse me, a day center that Jumpstart, which is a part of the message of the Cross Church, which is located at the Abbey. When the weather is 25 degrees or colder, they will allow individuals who are staying in our emergency shelter to go over there. Um, they have like a lounge area and they have some computers and they have volunteers there that kind of work with the, the folks who are staying in our emergency shelter. Right now, the day center is only open to folks who are staying in our emergency shelter and when the weather is 25 degrees or colder. The other thing is we have a lot of cool housing initiative things that are going on and are being talked about. One of them is the Koinonia Village, which is going to be part of a, the Wellsprings Church in Florence. They have a large piece of property. They're looking at maybe uh, getting some uh, tiny homes. They're working closely with the city of Florence and raising funds to do that. Um, Prospector RV Park has cabins that they don't use during the winter months that they have allowed uh, the well excuse me a message of the cross church to vet individuals and families and they are allowing them to stay up there at no cost or really low cost um, um, and then uh, message of the cross church is working with those families to help them find more uh, permanent housing and jobs and things like that Riviera Hotel is another uh, hotel in our community that allows individuals who are experiencing homelessness to go and stay, oftentimes at no or little cost to them. Um, then we have a, a, a website, and uh, we're working really closely with uh, the Canyon City uh, Daily Record and um, the Canyon Crusader, and monthly they actually do an editorial and they spotlight someone who's in, who is homeless and they kind of share their story. So they've been doing that now for several months. Um, Valleywide now provides a mobile medical van two times a month. Uh, one end day is in Canyon City on the east end, and then they move to the west end, or I think it's the other way around. Um, and, and then in, on the next day, they go to Florence at one of the laundromats to serve individuals. Uh, laundry Love is, a, is, a, is an, an initiative that allows individuals to do laundry for free. And there are two churches, the uh, um, First Episcopal Church and the Wellsprings church that sponsor that event. So every other week in our community, there's a place for individuals who are experiencing homelessness to go and do their laundry. Um, and then the last thing that has happened with the, the coalition is the Koinonia Kitchen, which uh, has partnered with the uh, uh, Two Sisters restaurant in Florence. Um, this is also part of the Wellsprings Church effort, and uh, they provide two meals a month there, evening meals to anyone in need. So, all right. So what's missing? We need a day center. We need a day center for everyone, for anyone who's experiencing homelessness. I don't know how that's going to happen, but we need your help in order to make it happen. Uh, the other thing is jobs opportunities. So as you saw on our subcommittee list that we have four subcommittees, but we do not have a job subcommittee. And so we're working on that as a coalition, but any effort that you guys can help, we need a place um, 
like a day labor place where folks could go and maybe work for a few days, get enough money where they can buy an ID, they can buy their, their, their uh, birth certificate, uh, maybe they just need some money for a gas so they can move on to the next place, but we don't really have anything like that. Um, also, just a brainstorming idea is, would it be possible to take individuals who, uh, businesses, would they be willing to take maybe someone who's experiencing homelessness and, and allow them to volunteer or do internships in their shop so they could learn some job skills and um, build up their resume, and from there, potentially, when there is an opening, maybe they would at least be considered for that position. So. Um, the folks that I know that are experiencing homelessness want to work, all right? It's not because they don't want to work. They want to work, they just can't find the job, or they lack the, identi the identification stuff, the ID and all that kind of stuff in order for them to get a job. The other thing is mentors. Mentors are key when you're working with someone who is experiencing homelessness. Someone needs someone to come alongside of them to encourage them <clears throat> to help, excuse me, <coughs> to help navigate just the system. They need someone to help um, and provide transportation, all that kind of stuff. Alternative housing, we talked about some different housing, but can we even get more creative than that? So I remember several years ago, Judy Lonis said something to me or <clears throat> in a meeting where 25% of the people who live in Fremont County are either a senior citizen or an empty nester. And so I'm like, that's a whole lot of empty bedrooms that are in our community. So is there a way that we can somehow match someone who needs housing to someone who has an extra bedroom? And maybe uh, the person who has that extra bedroom is probably on a fixed income, and so they could use the extra money. The person that would move in there would pay rent, and there'd be a lease, and all that kind of stuff. Could we create something like that? Um, and also Villa Carina, what they're doing over there is amazing. And we have um, a lot of folks that have been in our emergency shelter have been able to transition in over there. They have that month-to-month -month lease. It's very affordable. It's community living. And I know it's challenging. I know it's messy over there. But it's working and it's provided a safe place for a lot of our folks that they've been able to go there, stay there a few months, and then move into another place. So are there other landlords, are there other businesses that would be willing to tackle something like what those guys are doing over at Villa Carina. And the last thing is, is I need your help with this, guys. We need a safe and we need a legal place where folks who are experiencing homelessness can camp. Right now, we all know, we all know that they're hiding all over the place. But is there a way that we could come up with a place that would be safe for them, that there would be rules, there'd be some type of guidelines, we would have the, the porta potties, we'd have the trash cans, we'd have all those things, we'd have service providers going in there to provide assistance and to get them connected with services. That way they're not sprawled out all over the place, that, that, that way they're not on private property and causing other problems. So, anyway, go ahead. Didi, I just want to say about the day center too that it's so crucial because um, part of my job is public relations. So I have different community organizations that I go to, and I hear the same thing. Um, they don't want people who are homeless in there using their restrooms. Um, they feel like it intimidates customers. So this is a community-wide issue. Um, it is really important for us to develop somewhere for these folks to go in the daytime where they can get, you know, as you said, resume skills, just a place to go um, where they can start doing some productive things because um, once, they, once they are out in the daytime, there isn't anything for them to do besides loiter around. And we know that businesses don't like that. We're trying to come up with a viable solution. A day center would be a fantastic thing. So um, if anybody has any brilliant ideas, we'd sure love to hear. All right, so just last, leave you with that. And, and again, thank you so much for allowing us to uh, come and share with you and, and tell you a little bit about homelessness. So. Okay, thank you very much. Any mm -hmm. questions or comments? I don't have any questions, Mr. Chair, but one comment. Um, there are a lot of, I think, startling statistics there. But for me, maybe the one that speaks the loudest is the fact that in January, which was actually a very mild January, we still had 69 people here in Fremont County who were sleeping outside. Yeah. So I just thank you for the work that you're doing through the coalition and for those 100 people who are volunteering their time and efforts to try to find some solutions to the problem. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. I have one question. Sure. I'm just curious. Last year, there were 86. This year, there's 195. Yeah. Is there 
one cause that's causing this or is it multiple causes? Or? Yeah. So one of the reasons why the numbers are so low or there's a big difference is we did not have a homeless coalition that was able to go out and do a good search. And so that is, those numbers are just low because we didn't have the volunteers to do a, a, a good survey count like we did. Um, I think uh, Lowe's and Fishes could say that we are seeing more and more people coming into our emergency shelter. Um, um, and they're coming from all over the place. Uh, we are the only emergency shelter in what's referred to as the Upper Arkansas region, which is all the way from uh, Custer County all the way up to Clear Creek, and um, and they have no place to go. And so oftentimes, uh, folks will tell them to come our way. Also, Pueblo and Colorado Springs shelters are full, and um, they kind of move our way too to see if we have space. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And keep in mind that point in time was just from Canyon, Pembroke, sure. and Florence. There's all these outlying areas where a ton of people who are homeless are, and we there was no way we could even touch counting them. So yeah, it's just a snapshot. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The hour has reached 10 o'clock. We have uh, two public hearings <coughs> scheduled, and so we'll move into those real quick. Uh, first one is adoption of the on-site wastewater treatment systems septic systems. And with us, we have Sid Darden. Good morning, Sid. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wyatt had uh, inspections this morning and wasn't able to be here. That's what he told me, at least. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and he sets his own calendar? Yeah, think, yeah. So, it's okay. like, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> to be gone. You can tell so, John that you're soon to be retired, huh? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, so basically, just a little bit of background, um, we did this about four years ago. Um, from time to time, the State Health Department issues um, a new set of what we call OWTS, on-site wastewater treatment system regulations or guidelines, um, previously known as septic system guidelines, but they've updated the, the wording to be more reflective of what you're doing. You're actually treating instead of just sort of disposing. So the State Health Department issued new OWTS guidelines on June 30th of 2017 um, with the requirement that local jurisdictions had one year from that date to adopt or incorporate those changes into the local regulations. Um, and so Wyatt Sanders from the Fremont County Building Department again um, took this on and he basically went through and incorporated all of the required changes into our county regulations. Um, so basically he created a new document, which is what this is. Um, these were submitted to the State Health Department for their review. So we send them up after we make our changes and then they basically check to make sure that we've included everything that we're supposed to include. Um, and we received an approval letter um, for our Fremont County OWTS regulations on February 21st, 2018. Um, so then we basically started the public notice process. So um, the notice of public hearing was published in the Daily Record on March 31st of 2018 for the public hearing today. Um, and a copy of the revised regulations was made available in the Fremont County Building Department and they were also and are currently posted on the Fremont County website and we'll move the, remove those shortly after um, this meeting. Um, I asked Wyatt this morning if he had any highlights of what was changed and basically he said the new requirements didn't really include any major changes. There was some language that was revised or clarified and there were some issues regarding soil classifications um, that were cl uh, clarified um, and that's essentially what we did. So we have a state approval um, for our version of the regulations and we were, are just basically bringing it forward for any public comments. Okay, can you uh, let people know who, who would use this? Um, so the OWTS regulations would, would primarily be used by engineers that would be designing septic systems, contractors that would be installing septic systems, and certainly for homeowners, um, because we still allow homeowners to do their own individual installations. Um, so those would pri primarily be the people that would be of, of concern, and certainly some of the manufacturers of, of you know, the components, septic tank manufacturers, um, different stores that would sell chambers and other components, piping of, you know, okay. that would go into the installation of a septic Anybody system. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Not at this time. No. Okay. This is a public hearing, so I will open the public hearing. There's 
bound to be tons of comments on this. I see what? nobody no. coming up <laughs> to talk about septic systems. So I will now close the public hearing. And so, uh, wishes? Anything? Sure, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm all in favor of being and remaining in compliance with state requirements. <laughs> So uh, because these, these news, this new set of regulations will do that, I move to approve and adopt the new on-site wastewater treatment system regulations as Very just good. described by Sid. I agree and second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. <coughs> Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Sid. Very good. Thanks, Sid. Short and to the you. point. Um, can I get a resolution number at some point? Do I see you later for that? We would do that now. And then I'll, I'll, I'll write up the resolution. We could assign the number now. Okay. It, it does require a resolution? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 14. 14. 14. 14. Okay. Will you get me the resolution? Pardon? Will you get me the resolution? I will. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. And then uh, we have a second public hearing, a special event liquor permit for the KC Rodeo Association. I believe we are with us, Shelly Tizak. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to ask if we can get our special uh, okay, liquor get license a events. Closer to the mic and speak up so everybody can hear it. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry about that. I'm Shelly Tizak, and I'm with the Canyon City Rodeo Association, and we are here to. Um, see if we can get our liquor license for the 146th annual Royal Gorge Rodeo. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about dates, when it is, sure. times, um, and what exactly you're wanting to do? Okay. So we're holding a rodeo May 4th and 5th. It's a CPRA sanctioned rodeo. Um, it'll be held at 7 p.m. in the evening. Mutton Buston will be May 5th at 5.30 p.m. We're planning on bringing in temporary fencings to fence off areas where there are gaps in between um, our fenced-in area where our liquor would be held. We have bartenders that will be serving the alcohol. Um, security, checking IDs, and um, tickets being passed out to where they can go, go and get the beer. How about training on the... Uh Folks that are on the servers, on the bartenders. Um, we have professional bartenders that are planning on um, serving the alcohol. Um, if we need to have somebody do um, any other additional training, we are up for that. Is this in, uh, pretty much the same place it was last year? Same place, okay. same setup. And what are the times that you, you are planning on serving on those two days? It'll be 7 p.m. till the rodeo closes, um, probably 9, 10 o'clock so at would, night. Would, would you be starting serving a little earlier if the rodeo itself is starting at 7? If, if we, um, yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. sorry. Yeah, your okay. license would be from 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. For May 4th and 9 a.m. to midnight on May 5th is what we have it on there. So okay. That was okay. on the application. Okay. Okay. Got a little leeway there. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, this is a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing. Anybody have any comments about alcohol at a rodeo? Uh, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Okay. Any other? We have a staff report? Let's have a staff report. That would be awesome. Yep, everything's in order. Their app looks good. They've posted, they've published, they've done everything they need to do. Okay. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I just hope you don't let the mutton busters get into the beer before they. <laughs> I don't think the mutton busters okay. will. It's already so, funny enough. <laughs> with I, that, Mr. Chair, I, I would move to approve the special events liquor permit for the Canyon City Rodeo Association. May 4th and May 5th. Uh, May 4th would be 5.30 p.m. to 12 p.m. May 5th would be 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's actually 12 a.m. Yeah, it uh, says p.m., oh, but yeah. it's supposed to be midnight. Yep. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any further discussion? 
Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Good luck you with your rodeo. Thank you. The best of luck. Shelly, see you out there. Shelly, yeah. um, I know you have to leave and we have to get everything signed. So would you okay. um, want us to put it in the mail today or did you want to come back and get it later? Um, do you want me to go ahead and stay? Well, I have, I have, I, we've got to finish the meeting, so I won't be able to sign it until later okay. today. But we'll have it later today ready, or we can put it in the mail to you, but you'll need it before the event. So okay. I just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay. So um, I could come back tomorrow and pick it up. Perfect. We'll okay. have it ready for you. All right. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we'll move back to new business item number two approval and authorization of the chairman's signature on the HS Connects project statement of work in the IGA. And with us is Stacy Quiddick Russell. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so the Department of Human Services is looking to implement a program called HS Connects. It's a document management system. Um, it was developed by Arapahoe County, and it's a software system to help us manage all the volumes of documents that we get. We think it will um, it will speed up processing time, um, minimize the amount of work hours. The counties that have implemented this system have realized significant savings in staff time, um, and it's more efficient and timely for clients receiving our services. So there are three documents that would need to be, be signed if approved. The intergovernmental agreement for Gov Prime, which is an agreement between the Depart Fremont County and Arapahoe County, the HS Connect Service Agreement, and the Statement of Work for Implementation Agreement of HS Connects. Okay. Is there a cost associated with this? Stacey? There is. For this portion of it, the actual implementation, it includes training and getting our business processes in line. They have given us an estimate, so it really depends on um, how much help we need. Um, but the estimate, the estimate um, is ten thousand six hundred and two dollars for the training and implementation. There will be um, later for discussion after we get prepared and everything's implemented, there would be a monthly charge for users for the software system, um, but we're not to that point yet. So is this um, something that was in your budget or are you finding room in your budget? Yes, it's in the budget. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, it's always about how are we gonna pay for it? <laughs> so, that monthly fee, do you know, is it going to be consistent? Yes. Oh, so um, the, the anticipated monthly fee, will it's per user, so it depends on how many users. And currently, if the prices stay the same, it would be an average of $7,500 a year. Um, however, being a governmental agency, they, um, Arapahoe County can't make money on the system either. So it depends. The more counties that add on, the lower the cost will be. Um, and so I know there are several large counties that are um, implementing right now. So I would anticipate those yearly costs to go down. And do you have a timeline? So as soon as this is... Um, if this is approved and signed off on. Um, they're hoping to get us started right away, but it would take, it'll probably take three, three to four months before we're completely trained and we have everything in line. So very quickly. Yeah. Pretty quick turnaround. Okay. Yeah. They're becoming experts because so many counties have implemented. <laughs> they're getting right. good at this. <laughs> okay. Wishes. Sure, Mr. Chair, I move to approve and authorize the chairman's signature on all three documents, the HS Connects project statement, the service agreement, and the IGA. Second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go to item number three, annual ambulance licensing renewals. And with us is we have our new Fremont County Emergency Management Director, Jill Filer. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning, How are you? <laughs> Doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you. So it's time for our annual ambulance licensing inspections. Uh, I have completed those for the five different ambulance agencies that operate in Fremont County. That includes American Medical Response, Florence, Penrose, Deer Mountain, and AVA, which is Arkansas Valley Ambulance Company. Um, 
any issues that any of the ambulance companies had, any missing supplies, anything like that has been taken care of. And so my recommendation today is that we relicense them. This is for 2018 to 2019, so their license needs to be renewed by April 30th. My recommendation, um, based on our ambulance licensing regulations that we currently have in place in Fremont County, would be for American Medical Response to be licensed as an ALS provider. Um, Penrose, Florence, Deer Mountain, and AVA be licensed as a BLS ambulance. BLS. Basic life support. BLS. BLS. Correct. Can you just, for the record, state the difference between ALS and BLS? Absolutely. So basic life support is the designation that the level of the state has provided, meaning that they are providing basic life support services. So at their level, they have basic EMTs, or volunteers that have first aid experience. Um, the BLS providers can still provide advanced life support um, and bill appropriately when they have advanced life support personnel on the ambulance. The ALS license is stating that they at all times will have an advanced life support provider. So that is um, an EMT advanced, an intermediate, or a paramedic. So it just deals with the difference in the certification level of the personnel that they have on the ambulance at that time. Um, American Medical Response is the only ambulance provider in Fremont County that staffs that advanced life support 24-7, 365. So that's why it's my recommendation that they carry the advanced life support licensing. The other agencies do have ALS providers, but they can't guarantee that they are available 24-7, 365, and that's why I recommend that they get the BLS license. Memory serves, we do this once a year, but memory serves, we do this one at a time. Perhaps. I, I don't recall. We can do it that way. We can do it that way, but um, it's a, You've done this longer than I have. Well, it is a single new business item, um, okay. and it's a single recommendation. And just go by recommendations. Mm -hmm. We can do that, too. Mm -hmm. All right. I believe that would be accurate. I think that's a good action item to do it that way. Okay. All right. Any Mr. other questions for Jill? I just, I know that you put a lot of time and effort in on this, um, especially for someone who's brand new to the job here in Fremont County. So I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your efforts and all the time that you put in in, in making sure and ensuring everything is accurate and correct. So thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you, it's Debbie. a huge job. Thank you. We do appreciate that. And with that, Mr. Chair, I will move to approve annual licensing for AMR as ALS, Deer Mountain, Penrose, Florence, and AVA as BLS. I'll second. As per Jill Filer's recommendation. Correct. Okay. We move in segment. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Thanks, Jill. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we move to item number four. This is OPC. It's a <clears throat> optional premise cultivation for Pure Medical LLC. Uh, we were going to have Jason Vance from here, but I believe we have James Marks. Good yes, sir. morning, sir. Morning, commissioners. Morning. morning. So uh, <clears throat> we had a, uh, this is the fourth renewal, which normally would go on uh, consent, but uh, we did have a one-year trial period for a harvest room. I think we just kind of wanted to see how that went. Yes. Um, so the harvest room was fully completed last year. Um, it's fully odor mitigated and there are no windows to this building, so light leak is not an issue. Um, the building is a main function of vegging the, the year's crop to go out to the outdoor and then also to um, allow it to come down. Um, it gives us a big working area um, and platform to kind of just base our operations off of. Okay. Um, it's done, done well. Yes, yeah, as far as I know, there's been no complaints that we've received um, on it, and um, the odor mitigation is always maintained and kept in a functioning um, order. So. Okay. Matt, do you have a staff report? Um, 
code enforcement has not received any complaints on this site. Um, code enforcement visits the site in the area at least two times a week um, to investigate odor and light uh, um, disturbances or, or what have you in the area. And we have not found any on this site, so this site is a good site. And we do recommend uh, renewal of this application. Okay. Any other questions? I have none. Okay. No. With that, Mr. Chair, and noting that uh, this typically would have been placed on consent agenda, we just wanted a quick update on the building and how things are going. Absolutely. Um, I move to approve the renewal of OPC 14-011 for Pure Medical. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks for coming cool. in this morning. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Move on to item number five, reappoint Tony Adamic to the Regional GIS Authority for a term ending April 30th, 2020. Okay. I think he's been a solid member of that board. So. Solid member of that board, plus he utilizes GIS quite a bit in his duties. So um, with that, Mr. Chair, I move to reappoint Tony Adamic to the Regional GIS Authority term ending April 30th, 2020. I'll second that. I also think that Tony is an excellent choice to serve on this board. Agreed. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Item number six, reappoint Mike Pullen to the Fremont County Planning Commission for a term ending December 31st, <coughs> 2021. Mr. Chair, I believe that our Fremont County Planning Commission has been doing a really good job. I know that Mr. Pullen is a big part of that. So uh, he has expressed an interest in remaining on that board. Therefore, I move to reappoint Mike Pullen to the Fremont County Planning Commission for another term that will end on December 31st of 2021. Second. It's been moved and seconded. <coughs> Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number seven, appointment of Terry Bernoff to the John C. Fremont Library District Board of Trustees to fill the term expiring December 31st, 2021. I believe we have a letter in the we, email. We do have a letter from that where the John C. Fremont Library Board of, uh, yeah. Board of Trustees voted at their last meeting, April 10th, and they recommended appointment of Terry Burnett to the library board. They've had some people in there that have moved out of the area, so they've had to replace replace some people. With that, Mr. Chair, I would move to appoint Terry Burnett to the John C. Fremont Library District Board of Trustees to fill the term expiring December 31st, 2021. And I will second that with a note that she will be filling the seat currently or previously held by David Bynum. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Item number eight. Eight. Wait. Award. <laughs> Wait. 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 Yeah, well. Award bid for the administrative building roof project. I think we'll turn to Sunny on this one. Yeah, so we received four bids. Um, this year we're actually looking at the section that's furthest to the west. Um, side of the building and if with this we'll have three different phases of the project so we'll look at the middle section at one point and then the east side of the building at, at another point um, so right now we received four bids for this and they range from sixty four thousand three hundred fifty three dollars and sixty cents to one hundred and four thousand three hundred dollars and so it's our recommendation that we award the bid to Colorado commercial roofing um, in the amount of $64,353.60, and they will have the um, perlite concrete removal for $2.94 per foot um, on that as well. So we have received um, information saying that they're a re reputable company um, and don't have any concerns, and they were the low bidder, so we recommend awarding the bid to them. So once again, I have the budget question. Is this in the budget? So we actually did budget for this. We've been putting away money every year and kind of saving up for this. Um, this year, we had budgeted 75000 for this one portion, or that was the estimated amount. So we had actually budgeted substantially more because we were planning on doing a build bigger chunk. But what we're doing is putting a little bit of money away each year into our public building and maintenance 
um, fund, and that's kind of planning over the next few years to look at some of these bigger projects that we're going to need to start accomplishing. So yes, there is money in there. And the West Wing, I think, has the West Wing has, um, I believe, eight different skylights we've counted in there, many of which currently leak or have leaked previously. I think those skylights were the original equipment with this building 50 plus years ago. So I think it's time to have them replaced. Yes, and that actually, that portion of the roof is the one that leaks the most. We've had a lot of issues with it. And so it's definitely time to do that. Um, there will be a warranty with this new roof. So it's a 15 year um, warranty for the catastrophic type of warranty. And then uh, it actually extends out to 20 years for certain pieces of that as well. And so it's and then there was a warranty on the new skylights as well, right? Correct, yes. For hail damage and whatnot. Yes, awesome. Okay, any further discussion? We no, no discussion, but I have a motion. Okay. I move to award this bid for the administration building roof project to Colorado Commercial Roofing Inc. for a total amount of $64,353.60, adding to that the concrete removal of $2.94 per foot, which I would note also was considerably cheaper than the other bids that we received. Quite a bit. Second that. Okay, and that'll get our West Wing all fixed up. So <laughs> with that, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? <laughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. I would note, Mr. Chair, that uh, getting to this point that we're ready to award a bid has taken considerable time and effort by uh, Eric Seebeck, our facilities manager, as well as by Sonny Bryant. And so I just want to say thank you for all the work that. And, and I believe. actually want to put all of my credit to Don Moore Don because Moore, Don right? has yeah. done a phenomenal yes. job in getting all of the bid documents together and meeting with all the contractors. Even though he had knee surgery, he actually had knee surgery on a Monday and showed up for a pre-bid meeting on a Wednesday. So yes, I appreciate all of the effort he's put into So this. thank you for that. All right. Okay. And with that, uh, no further business coming for the board. We are adjourned. <laughs>